This is the most successful scam show of all time. A hit in 45 countries around the world. The real hustlers have stolen cars. Hi. It's perfectly safe there. Burgled houses. Picked. Switched. And ditched. Antenna for the whole hour. They've carried out close to 500 scams and stolen over £1 million. And now they're back for an 11th series. Alex, Jess and Paul. With new recruits, Polly and Jazz. Their job? To expose the tricks of the criminal's trade so that you don't get scammed. On tonight's show... Guest hustler Laura Hamilton claims she's innocent. That's my wages. That's all the money I've got. You can search me. Polly proves she's tops when it comes to winning prop bets. And that goes in the middle. And this guy has a very expensive lunch. He's been scammed. The marks in this show have no idea they're being hustled. They agreed the footage could be shown so that you can avoid falling for the same scams. The hustlers have invited celebrity friends to see if they can cut it as con artists. But they'll have no clue what the scam is about and there are no dress rehearsals. So this is Sink or Swim. Tonight's guest hustler is TV presenter and Dancing on Ice finalist, Laura Hamilton. I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen today. Currently in a park, near a pond. It's pretty wet and windy. I'm completely in an unknown world here, so um, it's a little bit daunting. I'm going to give it my best shot to uh, be a good hustler. I know from watching the programme that I often feel really sorry for the mark and think, oh, that's so cruel. How can the hustlers be doing that to them? So the fact that I'm going to be doing that myself, I'm going to feel really evil. Hello. Hi. Good weather for it. Well, I thought I'd bring the rain with me Did from you? London. How are you? I'm Alex. <laughs> Laura, nice to meet you. You ready for today? I feel really naughty um, <laughs> and nervous. Meeting in a park. But yeah. What are you going to do? What's going to happen? All right, well, I'll tell you what you're going to do. Today, you're going to play two parts. You're going to help somebody and then you're going to become a victim. Okay. And then after you become a victim, we're going to make a lot of money. Right. All right, right. come with me and I'll tell you, you the rest. I'll tell you the rest. Come on, let's go. Let's get out of this rain. So to help the hustlers scan that cash, Laura's going to have her work cut out in the honey trap. Today, the hustlers are operating in an upmarket pub just outside a city centre. They park up outside a local hotel and get into position. Hot on the heels of the hustlers are these guys. They're here to buy a second-hand laptop from a stranger. This guy's holding the cash, and that makes him the mark. You all right, guys? How you doing? You all right? And the stranger in the bar just happens to be Jazz. I don't know if you've come to get the laptop, right? Uh, I dropped it this morning uh, as I was bringing it down, and it's basically given a crack to the screen. Uh, so obviously I don't want to give you that because <laughs> it's broken. So I don't actually think I'm going to be able to get it to you today. I was hoping. So the laptop's not available yet. Shame. What's the mark going to do with the rest of his day and all that money in his pocket? Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry, mate. All right. Cheers, guys. The Mark leaves the bar and walks straight into a bit of a scene. I'm oh, <laughs> oh, sorry, can you just help me, please? Sorry. No, I'm just having such a <laughs> day. Sorry, can you just help me with that? It's Jess playing the damsel in distress, and she clearly needs a helping hand. 
Here comes someone else to the rescue. Sorry, it's Laura. Are you okay? Posing as a staff member of the adjoining hotel. It's her job to make sure the guys accompany Jess back into the building. Come inside. Come on, bring her inside. Come on inside. <laughs> job done. There's um, a quiet room if you go in there. Jess keeps up the waterworks and the boys follow Laura into a quiet function room. A seat over here. I'm so hot and everything just started falling out my back. Are you OK? No, I just have a really shit. Sorry, have you got something? Have you got yeah, yeah. Do you want a glass of water? Yes, please. So what, else, what else was in that? Was it no, just no, these no, two, no. was it? Can you just help me check it as everything in yeah. my bag? Thank you. The Mark has no real reason to hang about, but being a gent, he wants to make sure poor Jess is OK. <laughs> What happened? You... I just know really sorry because I'm here. Before he can leave, here come Alex and Paul. And they're about to make this situation a whole lot more complicated. She's in here. <laughs> Susie, you're right. Sorry. Oh, what are you doing here? Who are these guys? This is my this is my bus. What, what are you two doing here? What are you doing here, Susie? Sorry? These what guys obviously mean business. What's your name? Jane, I'm, I'm going to have to go back to work. Have a seat, Jane. Right, just... The Mark is trying to work out what he's got himself into. What's your name? I'm James. Hey, Steve. <laughs> What's wrong? Why are you upset? Alex and Paul are playing Jess's bosses. Sounds like they're not very happy about something. Is that my money in that bag? I was just taking it to the bank. Is that, is that what you wanted? Can I count the money in the bag, please, Susie? Yeah. Why are you trying to hide the money? I'm not. I'm not. What? I wasn't. She was just basically just met outside and packed up. The Mark doesn't know anything about any money. Guys, I've really got to get back to work. Sorry, just, you could uh, just sit there for a second. Just we'll give us a up. few minutes. What's, what's going on? Alex makes sure Laura stays put as he counts out the money from Jess's bag. Please, what is going on? I haven't got a clue what's going on. Are you upset, Nor here? does he. We are £1,570 short. OK, so can I look through the rest of your bag, please? There's over 1,500 quid missing from the bar's money bag. And Alex suspects Jess's light fingers. I don't understand Calm what's down. going on. We Susie, I need to bag. look at your bag, sweetheart, because if the rest of the money is in here, then something's not right. I'd like it always. It's not, it's not. Take her over there and uh, give her a handkerchief or something, will you? Come with me. Calm down. I, know, but I don't understand look, why. Calm down. We'll find I don't out understand what's happening. What's happening. Right. Alex takes Jess away to find out where the missing money is. I think that they, they picked everything up on my bag and that everything was in there. Wait a minute, so hold on. So what are you saying, that the, the rest of the money is where? Where's the money? I don't know, you picked everything up. I That's know. news to him. Everything outside. I've not, so they've got it. So they've got your money? Did you pick anything up? I'm going to hang up every We're £1,570 short. All right, hold on, hold on. I've never even seen that girl in my life. Have a seat. I've never seen this girl from my side. I'm just like, Where do you live? I've not got You don't know her at all? I've never oh, seen her in my life. I, I'm on my break and I've got to get back to work. What's that money there? What's that? It suddenly dawns on the mark that he does have a big wad of cash in his pocket. The £1,500 for the laptop. He decides to come clean. You got money on you? Yeah. yeah. Can I have a word with you outside? Yeah, have a word with my colleague for a second. On that bombshell, Alex takes Laura out of the way, leaving Paul to ramp up the pressure. How much money you got on you? Uh, we basically were meeting a guy for a laptop just there. So you just happen to be here? I know, I know it looks like pure ridiculous, but like, I've got the text and I've had to prove it. Like, Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's That's right. a lot of money. I know, I know. You just happen to be... Yeah, that you... it just happens to be, yeah. It all sounds a bit too much of a coincidence. Now, I know you're telling me you don't have it, but we need to get to the bottom of this. Right now, hotel worker Laura is being given a going over by Alex in the hallway. That's 1500 and this guy's got an awful lot of explaining to do about all that cash. That's exactly the amount of money that is missing. It's a hell of a coincidence, isn't it? I know it is a hell of a coincidence. He's left wondering what on earth he's got himself into. 
and how he will ever get back out. When hustlers go out, they don't take money. They take prop bets. <laughs> the proposition bet has only one rule, and that's that the hustler always wins. Polly is out on the town, but tonight she isn't going to buy a single drink. Instead, she's going to make her friends buy them for her. Right, who wants to bet with me? Who wants a little bet, yeah? OK, if you lose, you've got to buy everyone around a drink. If you win, I'll buy everyone one, yeah? OK, so here I have three bottle tops. OK, the bet is I want you to get this one in the middle of these two, OK? And there's like a couple of rules. This one, you can move, touch, do whatever you like with that one. This one, you can't move, that has to stay okay. there. And this one, you can't touch. So do you want to give it a whirl? Sure. Yeah. So, this top needs to go in here. But they can't move this one. And they can't touch that one, eh? So you can move this one. Yep, you can touch, move that one, yep. To get it in between. That's good, but it has to be in between like this. Actually in between. Yeah, them. actually okay. in between, yeah. No. That's quite good, <laughs> but this one moves. Yeah. So that's. But. I give up. You give up? Yeah. So three, I can move and touch this one. This one I can touch but not move, and that one I can't touch. And that goes in the middle! <laughs> so, Polly holds this one, knocks it with that one, and moves the bottle top into the resulting gap. Simple. Sort of. So this time I will have a glass of wine. Brilliant. <laughs> Lovely. It's a soggy weekday morning, and this couple is sheltering from the rain in a cosy calf. The guy's got his mobile phone on the table, and although there isn't a hustler in sight, that makes him the mark in SMS SOS. The mark has just received a text from a mate called Jamie. Jamie has filled up with petrol and left his wallet at home and now he can't leave. Looks like he needs some help. Jamie. Jamie, you can't must move over here, He tries to ring him. No answer, but another text. I think my phone is broken now. And another. Have you any cash on you? No. Good. They're going to send someone over to Cathy from a closer branch. I don't have any cash on me though. Yes, I think I've got like 12 quid in cash. <laughs> 12 quid on them. So, his mate needs some cash to pay for a petrol bill, but the mark hasn't got enough on him. It's out into the rain to find a cash point and back into the dry as quickly as possible. Yeah. Just in time for someone else's entrance. It's a petrol station attendant, sent to pick up the cash. And he looks a lot like Jazz. To pick up petrol for uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. Petrol, yeah. Oh, perfect. Uh, let me just get a receipt for you. Uh, it's for 50. Yeah. Here you go, mate. 50 quid for his mate's tank of petrol. Perfect. Cheers. Nice one. Thanks, pal. Jazz heads off with the cash, and the mark feels like he's done a good deed. But somehow, this guy having a quiet lunch has really been scammed out of his money. Earlier that morning, a clumsy customer knocked his mobile phone onto the floor. It was Alex, who'd been sitting right behind the mark at the bar. He made sure that the phone smashed right under the couple's table, with pieces flying everywhere. For another piece that might have... Sorry, sorry. A piece of phone... No, I think that's probably the end of that one. <laughs> you won't be making calls on that again. 
Uh, sorry, I couldn't ask you for a quick favor. Can I borrow your phone just to let somebody know that I'm, they can't contact me? I can just dial out. It's a, just another mobile. Is that all right? Absolutely. Thank you. Sorry. Mark then let Alex use his phone to let a colleague know where to find him. Do you mind if I send him a quick text message? Thank you. Unable to reach him, Alex then asked to send a text instead. Yeah, I think I've done it. I've deleted it so you don't have to have any. Right, thank you. Thanks. Alex then returned the Mark's phone and headed upstairs to wait for his business partner. So what really happened? I couldn't ask you to borrow your phone just to let somebody know that I'm on mobile. Is that right? When he got hold of the Mark's phone, Sorry. he actually called his own perfectly intact phone in his pocket in order to find out the Mark's phone number. Do you mind if I send them a quick text message because they, they might be on the train? Thank you. And instead of texting, he looked up a recent call. In this case, the Mark's mate, Jamie. Then he deleted Jamie's number and replaced it with his own phone number. Yeah, I think I've done it. I've deleted it so you don't have to have any. From this point on, he could sit upstairs texting the Mark from his phone and it would look as if it was coming from Jamie. And the Mark's fate was sealed. Once Jazz had collected the money, Alex made his exit. And slowly, the light bulb comes on in the Mark's head. What's Jimmy's number? <laughs> Just been scammed. The guy that see the guy that picked my phone up, he changed Jimmy's number. That's why he wouldn't pick the phone up. It's a guy. He's unlucky. Dropped his phone. It's smashed, and he's in a bit of, a, a bit of trouble. And needs to borrow someone's phone. I didn't think anything of it at all. I saw him dart out of the, uh, the cafe just after, and that was when I thought there might be something a bit suspicious happened. And I got my girlfriend to check her phone number and compare it with the number in my phone, and I noticed it was different. And that was when I thought, oh, something's not right here. You hear about it, but it's not something you ever think will happen to yourself. So it's quite shocked and angry and upset about it. This is a devious little scam. The Mark believes he's helping other people out. First, Alex with his broken phone, and then his mate who's stuck at a petrol station. Never give anyone access to your smartphone. If there is an emergency, dial the number yourself and watch as they use the phone. More importantly, if someone contacts you looking for money or assistance and you can't speak to them directly, there's a good chance someone is hiding behind their identity. We store our lives on our smartphones. They're not just telephones. We very often have banking details. We have personal information on there that's really important. And you need to protect that. And you need to look after that information and keep it close to you. The best advice is never to let a stranger have access to your phone in that way. Dial a number for them by all means, but don't hand over control of your life to a stranger. Earlier today, TV presenter Laura Hamilton helped Jess put this mark in a very sticky situation. I don't understand Calm what's down. going on. It's just Susie, so I need to look at your bag, sweetheart. Jess stands accused of stealing bar takings from bosses Alex and Paul and has pointed the finger at the mark. Where's the money? I don't know, you picked everything up. Though he's totally innocent, he's actually carrying a very incriminating £1,500. That's a lot of money. I know, I know. And he thinks he's in deep, deep trouble in The Honey Trap, part two. Let's have a seat for me, will you? Laura comes back into the room. Uh, Give me a second, will you? This is Paul's cue to leave. Susie, please just stay there. Just Susie. stay there. Okay. It's Laura's big moment. Guys, look, I think... I don't know what's going on, but whatever they say, just do, because yeah, yeah. I, I'm like... <sighs> yeah, I don't, I don't think we want to kind of mess with them. I'm just like... <laughs> right now, Laura is alone with the Mark and his mate. She's been sent in to convince him that the hustlers mean business. And the Mark isn't arguing. All right, I need to count this. Yeah, I think okay. that's fine with you. All right. 
I'm um, sorry to. Yeah. But you know, this money does not belong to Susie. I mean, it belongs to our. The guys return, and Alex makes a big show of counting the mark's cash. He's convinced it's the cash that Jess has stolen from them. The mark can't believe what's happening. That's fifteen hundred plus the seventy from you. That's fifteen seventy. That's exactly the amount of money that is missing. It's a hell of a coincidence, isn't it? No, it is a hell of a coincidence. How are they going to resolve this terrible situation? You know, boys, I've got to call the police no matter what happens here. Yeah, that's but, fine. That is absolutely fine. But all right, like, let me um, have a word with her for me, will you? Do you want to tell me now where the money? Yeah, I told you that's, that's it. I haven't got it in my bag. That that will be it there. That's not I've got it in my bag. Have I got that? Will be but it you realise that we're missing a lot of money. Yeah, but I dropped everything. They probably just picked it up. Jess is still claiming that money came from a handbag. The fact you got all this money, I've got to check it. Do you understand? I know that makes sense. Looking more nervous by the second, the mark has no choice but to agree to allow Paul to check the cash. Just tell me honestly now, you did not get this money from her. 100%, that is my, that is okay. my wages, like... Laura's protesting her innocence too. Can you take a photograph of this? Yeah. I'm going to take a photograph of some yeah. of these serial numbers, yeah, fair I enough. Yeah, We've got all the serial numbers back at the office. There is a way to sort this out. Alex is going to check the serial numbers of the Marks notes against ones they photographed back at the office. As they already suspected Jess of stealing, it was a trap they set for her. Right, keep all the money together just now if you don't mind. All the cash, Jess's, Laura's and the Marks, goes into the same bag. So what I'll do is, why don't you come with me, you stay with the money. Okay, take about 10 minutes and then we'll come back and sort this out. How does that sound? Right. All right. So the Mark comes to the bar and Laura watches the cash. In fact, what does she have? Se what does she have, 70 pounds? 70, yeah. All right, why don't you come with us? This is your money, you stay with your money. No, change of plan. The Mark had the most cash, so it's only fair he stays with the blue money bag. I didn't we'll do any, I out. didn't take it, they probably got that on the table there. As Laura and the other hustlers leave, Paul has a few reassuring words for the Mark. Listen, yeah. she's done this before. Yeah. She's dropped people right in it, yeah, yeah. okay? And the thing is, there's nobody to back it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we've taken a record of everything yeah. she took out. She went nowhere near the bank, okay. and we saw her drop it off. Do you yeah, understand? Yeah. Promise me you'll be here in ten minutes. Yeah, no, maybe. All right. All right, we'll be right back. I want your word on it. I'm here. Paul makes the mark shake on it. The mark breathes a sigh of relief. Hopefully, this whole mess will be sorted out soon. And after all, he's been left looking after all the cash. The mark waits. <laughs> and waits. <laughs> and waits. There's no sign of the hustlers returning, and the mark is starting to tear his hair out. But he's still too scared to touch the money bag. A full hour of waiting later, the mark has had enough, and he has a look inside the money bag. There's the envelope, but it contains precisely zero pounds sterling. Here's what he didn't see. Earlier today, Jazz scouted the area for the laptop deal. As well as a bar, he wanted a quiet room nearby, just like this one. He then stashed a blue money bag on the table. Later on, when Alex counted the Mark's cash, it went into an identical blue bag. Whilst the mark was stressing out, Alex switched one blue bag for the other. 
concealing the one with the cash inside the newspaper. Why don't you come with me? You stay with the money. Susie, come on, in the car. The hustlers walked out with all the Mark's money. I want your word on it. Come here. Leaving him looking after nothing but a load of worthless newspaper. But by this time, the hustlers were long gone, along with his £1,500. Finally, computer salesman Jazz was picked up just around the corner, and the getaway was complete. I was so scared, I was thinking, how is anyone going to believe me about this money? I was like terrified, I was like, I'm just going to cooperate fully with these guys, and I didn't want to leave because I thought, I'm not having these people after me and stuff like that, but I think you need to be careful and check your money and stuff like that as well. Like. When the cash was being counted on the table, um, I kept looking over at the guys and I could see they were really scared. I mean, my, my heart was really racing um, and I was pretty scared too. I just felt like I was totally in the situation and really, really felt for them. I mean, I really think they thought if they don't give the money over, something was going to happen to them. I think people that actually do this for work in the real world quite clearly have no morals. I mean, the, the boys were genuinely feeling for Jess. They wanted to help her, comfort her, pick her bits and pieces up. And yet, you know, when you someone's good natured and you, and you play on that, it's a pretty nasty thing to do. Please don't let this scam put you off helping someone in distress. There's nothing wrong with doing a good deed, but when you're suddenly faced with a demand for cash, then you should know that all is not as it seems. If anyone tries to pressure you into handing over your money, you have the right to walk away or call the police for assistance. Consider that the entire situation may have been orchestrated just to separate you from your cash. The best advice here is to call the police. You can't know what's going on in this argument. You can't get beneath the surface. Let the professionals deal with it. If you want to know more about how this show is made, go to bbc.co.uk slash real hustle. Time to snuggle up on the sofa with our favourite BBC Three Man next. Russell Howard's here with his good news in a sec, and it's two shows back to back. Hurrah!